I think we're, we're already in an exciting period. Um, 10 years ago, we would tell patients that, that if they didn't have very aggressive chemotherapy and an auto transplant, that they could look forward to a longevity of three to four years. And that is not the case any longer. So I'm hoping that with more and more agents, much like we've seen with follicular lymphoma, that we can extend our overall survival of patients so that now we're talking about this being a chronic disease for many patients. Of course, there will need to be work done uh, to understand why and how people go th through blastoid transformation and how we will deal with that more effectively. If I had one piece of advice, it would be don't be afraid to refer as patients. Uh, I, 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 don't th I don't think it's a fear per se. I think that when you're taking care of an elderly patient and you're worried about the commute and you're worried about these kinds of things, the psychosocial um, factors in particular, um, I would say in this situation with, with the disease being as rare it is, is, as it is and as heterogeneous, with the disease being as rare as, as it is and as heterogeneous as it is, getting some input from a, a subspecialist uh, at, a, at a major cancer center can be hugely informative. And it can be in ways that are unexpected, sequencing, access to clinical trials, and so on, that may radically improve the longevity and, and also the quality um, of life of the patient that, that's in front of you. So I think that's something that, um, that would be my primary form of advice. What I will tell the community oncology is, so first of all, is there is a lot of excitement in mantis cell lymphoma. For those community oncologists that are my age, so we grew in the era that we thought the mantis cell lymphoma was aggressive, incurable, bad disease, well, that's changed. First of all, when you see a patient with mantis cell lymphoma is, I don't want to affect your quality of life. You were diagnosed with mantis cell lymphoma. It's an incidental finding. You are doing fine. There is a group of patients in which you can do watchful waiting. It's safe. What I do is, when I make a decision that this patient is going to be followed with watchful waiting, I see the patient once a month, for three months, just to have what I call, quote unquote, a flavor of the disease, how the disease is behaving in that particular patient. So that's my number one. So number two is, if your hematopathologists see large volume of mantis cell lymphoma patients, fine with that. But if not, always refer a mantis cell lymphoma patients to your near academic center to see what type of clinical trials may be available for that patients, or maybe a clinical trial assessing minimal residual disease, or maybe there is some uh, studies looking at uh, uh, molecular abnormalities in mantis cell lymphoma tissues, information that at some point might help your patient. So, second opinion in a near academic centers. But I always say, if the patient is going to receive a standard treatment, that standard treatment can be delivered close to home. It's better for the patient because the patient doesn't have to drive 20, 30 miles or going to the downtown to the city with all the traffic. It's better for the patient to receive treatment close to home. So. In summary, my, my message is be aware of the watchful waiting. Refer your patient to a, a community academic center. If the patient is enrolled in clinical trial, probably the patient will be treated in the academic center. But if the patient needs to receive approved therapies, it's better to do that treatment at home. Third message and final message is do not think that because this is an oral agent is, is going to be take your pills and see you in six months, there is an spectrum of side effects that you need to be aware for each specific. And try to be ahead of the problem. Don't chase problem. Try to always start thinking what might happen in this patient if, uh, and review the medications that your patient is taking. Because it's oral agent, a lot of interactions.